Welcome back to the comments section. I'm Brett Cooper. We have another reboot to discuss today. No, God, please, no, no. I mean, is anybody surprised? Absolutely not. At this rate, I should just do like a monthly recap and lump all of the reboots together and be like, this is what you need to know. This is what Hollywood is doing because they are lame and they have no creative ideas anymore. But anyway, we are focusing on one specific reboot today. This is the 13th reboot of this show. No. Don't like that. The world is getting a new version of The Office, but there's a twist. Before we dive into this, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. Alrighty, so the twist is that this new office is being led by a woman. Of course, because it's 2023 and anything that ever had a man in it needs to be recreated. We need to cast women in all of those roles in order to smash the patriarchy. But Variety tweeted about it. They said female-led version of The Office to begin production in Australia. Yay, feminism. Making big, meaningful changes every single day. Now, I am honestly shocked that it took them this long to make a female version of The Office, considering the sociopolitical climate of our world. Like, I would have expected to see this in 2016. Like, this is very 2016 feminism of like, we're gonna do a female office. Cause that's like, you know, the female Ghostbusters. I kind of lump that all in to the same category. Now, in the Variety article, they give more details and they say, Australian comedian and actor Felicity Ward from Wakefield and the Inbetweeners 2 will portray Hannah Howard, the MD of packaging company Finley Craddock in The Office Australia. In a post-COVID plot twist, ooh, Howard gets news from the head office that her branch will be shutting down and that the staff will have to work from home. She goes into survival mode, making promises she can't keep and launches outlandish plots in order to keep her work family together. Now, there is nothing people love more that a COVID storyline after we lived in that hellish landscape for three years and the state of emergency only ended last month. I'm sure that is what we all really want to see in a TV show. This is the worst. Like I literally stopped watching shows when they would incorporate COVID into the narrative. Like I used to love Last Man Standing with Tim Allen. And then in that last season in 2020, cause they were filming and then they had to stop because of COVID and then they came back. Everybody was in masks and COVID was like a whole talking point, but obviously it wasn't based. Like they didn't even let Tim Allen do anything that was remotely right wing or talking about COVID at all. It just was COVID. I've been there, I've done that. You know, that's behind me. I hated it. It's like, I want to watch things to escape, not to watch what I'm actually living in. Anyway, I digress, moving on. But then they go on and they say, a filming of the eight part series will commence in Sydney in June. Production is by Prime Video, BBC Studios Australia and New Zealand and Bunya Entertainment. The show will be branded as an Amazon original and will launch on Prime Video worldwide, excluding the US in 2024. So thank goodness guys, this does not seem like something that us Americans need to consume, does not seem like it would be good for us. So you can watch this episode and then you can move on with your life and you will never have to watch this show unless you really, really want to go try to find it on the internet. I am dead inside. Now, in case you want a taste of it though, since you're not going to be able to watch the entire thing unless you are in the rest of the world, this is the woman who is starring in it. Am I mentally ill? <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, I've got, I've, look, I've got plenty of them. First one, I've got generalized anxiety disorder or GAD as no one calls it. Um, I also was diagnosed with evolving depression and it's just, it's just nice to have a doctor who believes in you, you know? Like he had one look at my mental illness and thought that thing has potential. And he was right, it developed. The other thing I have is irritable bowel syndrome that's related to my anxiety. Uh, it's the sexiest of all the syndromes. I like that she uh, paused to let that joke land. It was really funny. I definitely laughed. I appreciated that timing a lot. People get very uncomfortable when you say the D word, when you explicitly, people squirm. They feel very uncomfortable. So I made up a euphemism to make people more comfortable. When I'm having an IBS attack, I say that I'm having a closing down sale because everything must go. As that was coming out of my mouth, I knew that it was wrong. That was really funny. This show is gonna kill. This show is gonna be absolutely fantastic if I've ever seen it. But needless to say, no one seems thrilled about this reboot online. Like the show is getting absolutely torched in the comments, torched just like Grill Blazer. Now, are you guys tired of waiting for your grill to heat up? Now you can say goodbye to those tedious moments of impatiently waiting for the charcoal to burn and say hello to instant barbecue perfection thanks to our new friends at Grill Blazer. Grill Blazer's grill guns are designed to do everything from expertly searing your meats to lighting charcoal grills, wood stoves, outdoor fireplaces, and just about any 
anything you can think of that you need high power fire to solve your problem. Grill Blazers offer two types of grill guns. The Grill Gun Basic is a high powered propane torch designed to light charcoal and wood grills and smokers. It burns up to 3,600 degrees. Its 30 inch flame is for anything that you need a big bad torch to do. The sous vide gun has a shorter barrel, perfect for professional culinary kitchen uses from gently caramelizing creme brulee, which is my very favorite dessert, to rapidly searing steaks outside on the grill. Using the grill gun may result in extreme grill envy from your neighbors and increased demands for barbecue parties. Get your own grill gun from Grill Blazers today and let the grilling adventures begin. Visit grillblazer.com. Use promo code Cooper for 15% off your order. Again, that is grillblazer.com. Promo code Cooper for 15% off your order. You can torch up some steaks while you read people getting torched in the comments. It sounds like what I'm going to be doing for the entirety of the summer. Somebody commented and said, evidently a committed method actor. She's apparently just mentally ill. Somebody else said, I didn't even crack a sympathy smirk. I literally do not know who was laughing. It's like her mom and maybe her boyfriend and like her weird girlfriend that just came along. They were sitting in the corner laughing and everybody else was hiding behind those masks. Female comics would be funnier if they stopped making mental illness and misogyny their main personality traits. That is just like a common thread across everything. This woman didn't talk about misogyny. I'm sure she did at some point. I'm sure she's made a joke about it, but she did hit the mental illness thing and maybe she should move on from that. Anyway, somebody commented and said, so it's a drama, not a comedy. Somebody else thought I picture Amy Schumer begging for a role. Yeah, she's going to try to become Australian for this. Although I feel like maybe she's getting a little more self-aware because she was offered the role of Barbie. <laughs> in the new Barbie and Ken movie, and she turned it down. So maybe she's, you know, realizing that she's not the star she thinks she is. Somebody else said, hours of repeated, I'm a bad bitch girl boss is gonna be annoying. I did not even think about that when I first saw this, but considering that she is the MD of this packing company, that's probably how she's gonna be talking. Somebody else said, God, no, this is gonna be so bad. Somebody else said, it still must suck. I watched one episode of the American version years ago with an ex-girlfriend and it was intolerable. Typically predictive network TV blather. I felt like I was being tortured. Now this is a really important point because the American version that so many people have, you know, come to know and love is also a remake. <laughs> David Brent, my liege, how are you? <laughs> Michael Scott. Oh. The original was a British TV show with Ricky Gervais and there is this whole divide and debate about which one is better and more popular, obviously the American American one went on for many more seasons than the British one did, but it was not the original. I don't necessarily lump the Steve Carell office in with my hatred of modern remakes, though, considering that it was made so long ago and it wasn't yet part of the, you know, we have no innovative ideas and we're scared that we're going to offend somebody, so let's just, like, close our mouths and remake something because it's easier. Like, obviously... They were pushing the envelope a little bit. They were a little bit politically incorrect. Like if you guys have listened to that Office Ladies podcast where they, you know, recap the entire office in all the episodes, they're like, ooh, mm, I can't believe we ever said that. Ooh, that would never fly now. Oh, I can't believe we did that. It's like, ladies, you are rich and you made your career off of making these jokes. You cannot backtrack and go, ooh, I can't believe we said that. <laughs> anyway, that is why I do not <laughs> lump that show in with the modern remix. But anyway, to the Office franchise's credit, most of these 13 adaptations have been done in different countries that highlight to different office cultures for their audiences. And then in the Variety article, they said the Australian adaptation is the 13th iteration of the show that was originally created by Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant. Other international retreads have included those in France, Canada, Chile, Israel, and the Middle East. I want to watch the Taliban version. Do you guys remember that article that we read a few months ago about how the Taliban is now fed up with their desk jobs and they hate the nine to five life and somebody made a little TikTok pretending that it was the office? Like that is what I want to watch. Comedy is ruined. Comedy is a place where the mind goes to tickle itself. That's what she said. <laughs> I do see all of that as being a little more creative and intriguing for these local audiences because it is, you know, created for them. It's directed at them. And Ricky Gervais, who created The Office, does seem excited about this adaptation. He said, I'm very excited about Australia remaking my little show from the turn of the century. Office politics has changed a bit in 20 years probably not for the best. So I cannot wait to see how they navigate a modern day David Brent. I also think he's probably excited because it means that he gets a payday. Let's be real. Now, a lot of people were bringing an important show into this. So I want to make sure that we clear the air here. Somebody commented and said, we already had this. It's called Parks and Recreation. Like everybody was ragging on Parks and Rec. Like, oh, we don't need to do this. Parks and Rec. It wasn't even funny. It wasn't even good. Parks and Rec is one of my favorite shows Ever. I love Parks and Rec. And I don't care if you think that that makes me like a stupid girl that doesn't understand comedy. It is fantastic. Like, I do think it took them a bit to find their voice, and the first season was a little wobbly, but I love it. It launched some amazing careers, and Amy Poehler is just stupid funny, especially back then, and it was started at a time when writers could still be funny, and they weren't terrified about being canceled. So, I do believe 
that women can be funny and that female-led shows can be successful. But in 2023, when comedy consists of proving your social justice warrior status and women just want to write bits about straight white men and aborting their babies, I'm sorry if I don't have a lot of hope for this adaptation. But we'll see. Actually, I won't see because it won't even be in America. So I can move on from this and it'll be great. Thank you for watching the comment section. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, like this video, and of course, if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I'm Brett Cooper. See you next time.